at Morningside USA. Please give a warm welcome to Jim and Lori Baker. Thank you, Tammy Sue Baker. Welcome, yes. everyone, Hi to there. our show today. We have Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis <laughs> with us today, senior strategist at the Pentagon. He spent a year on the Korean DMZ and traveled throughout North and South Asia, including Hong Kong. Colonel McGinnis has almost 30 years of national media experience as a columnist at Fox News, military analysis, and as on-and-air commentator for multiple radio networks. He's the author of eight books. His latest being, Give Me Liberty, Not Marxism. Amen. Did you hear that? Yes. Here's the cover. Give me liberty, not Marxism. Amen. We are headed to a hellish country if we don't stand up for America and get our nation turned back around. Amen. It's sliding fast down a slippery slope towards the most hellish thing that could ever happen. Something's gone wrong in America, and we're going to talk to Colonel about it today, find out uh, what he has to say on where we're headed mm -hmm. and how we can stop it. Yes. Colonel uh, is a, serves as a member of volunteer organization, is very active in his local church, so I want you to welcome back to our program, Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis. Good to see you. You're looking good. And Thank you. I, tell, tell us what your new book is about. Give me liberty, not Marxism. Tell us a little bit about it as we open the show today. Well, Pastor, uh, last summer uh, I had a... Um, an inclination that uh, Mr. Biden would win. Uh, I knew about the background of those that surrounded him, and I anticipated that when he uh, took office, that he would not live up to the middle of the road political agenda, but rather a rather radical Marxist agenda. And I thought it was important, given my background, that Americans uh, begin to appreciate, you know, what that really means. You know, I. You know, as you indicated when you uh, introduced me, I, I spent a year looking at North Koreans. I spent several years in West Germany looking at you know, Soviets. I even traveled through the Soviet Union. I've been to communist Cuba. My own stepmother uh, escaped from communist Czechoslovakia, and I had many conversations with her. So I really understand you know, what I'm talking about, uh, not only as a scholar, but also, you know, from pragmatic experiences on the ground, looking at these people and their culture. And then, of course, uh, I bring the Washington perspective. I've been here in Washington on and off for more than 50 years, and I've seen the good, the bad, and the, the very ugly. And unfortunately, Mr. Biden, I'm afraid, uh, is not all there mentally, uh, which has some very significant implications for our future. He surrounded himself with radical leftist, arguably Marxist, uh, and and then of course you know, our enemies are beginning to smell blood or blood in the water. You know the Chinese are saying very incendiary things. The Russians, Mr. Putin, uh, is saying things that are very uh, very difficult to accept as an American. And, and then of course others, the Iranians, the North Koreans, and so forth. And, and so I see a very very uh, strong potential that this country could go in a very bad direction uh, for the good of our future. Uh, and I'm hoping that Americans will stand up and begin to push back against this radical agenda. That's right. Good. You say that we're entering an unprecedented time of danger. What do you mean? Well, you know, over the last months of the Biden administration, we've seen um, you know, very significant evidence of, you know, this Marxist agenda. And I, I put a list together, and I'll quickly go through some of those, Pastor, just for your audience's uh, benefit. I think it's important to, to see, you know, what has happened over the last 
you know, several months to really begin to demonstrate that, you know, this is not the America that you and I uh, have known for many years. Uh, first of all, they threw open our southern border and they have no intention of making one again. And then, in fact, our so-called border czar, uh, Vice President Harris, you know, it ten, you know, appears to be in incredibly ineffective and could care less about the illegal, massive illegal immigration into this country. Uh, they ignore leftist violence in a way that basically politicizes the law to their favor. Uh, they call for the passage of so-called Equality Act, which basically says women and girls have to compete against biological boys who happen to call themselves transgenders. They demand new election laws. And of course, that's about the Democratic Party having eternal power. Uh, they mushroom our debt, spending perhaps six trillion or more dollars. Really what this is is a stealth tax on the American people. They make America dependent upon foreign energy after we were independent. And why did they do this? They did it for the benefit of those who you know, really are concerned about you know, climate change. Meanwhile, what do they do with the Russians? They open their pipeline and they close the XL pipeline. They promote globalism. And you know, that basically means we become subordinate to you know, supranational organizations like the United Nations. They upset the peace with foreign enemies, you know, such as you know, China. And in fact, the editor-in-chief of China or Global Times, which is the you know, communist Chinese mouthpiece, you know, basically said that Mr. You know, Biden lacks self-confidence and they sense a weak man. They strike out against our constitutional religious freedom. They employ divisive uh, Marxist techniques, such as the critical race theory. They encourage big tech, tech to suppress our speech. They weaken our military by making us more, quote, woke. Uh, and of course, they purge our ranks, they're beginning to, much like Stalin did in the 1930s for those that didn't adhere to a communist agenda. They turn Washington into an armed camp with thousands of uh, National Guardsmen. And of course, they seek to destroy the Senate's filibuster rule. They create a commission to study whether or not the Supreme Court ought to be expanded, once again, to expand their powers. They move to marginalize and eventually remove our Second Amendment. They intend to impose a vaccination passport if given the opportunity, which will restrict our Fourth Amendment rights. And of course, they are setting the stage. Uh, to dismantle this country via what's called the Great Reset by selling us out to globalists that really want to manipulate the United States. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Many things are happening, but this is the agenda I've seen from Mr. Biden in the short months he's been in office. Wow. wow. You talk about a, a Kabul taking, aiming to take over the world. Who do you think they are? And how close are they to succeeding? Well, uh, it's, it's personnel like uh, George Soros, who funds millions of dollars of leftist activities in this country. Uh, it's the Googles of the world who, who are manipulating our free speech. It's, of course, the Chinese who are interested in uh, taking over the entire world based upon what President Xi Jinping has been saying for some time, and they intend to do that by 2049, the 100th anniversary of the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, we've begun to see what you know, a host of uh, players like the Democratic Party, you know, that look at their statements, look at their agenda. It's radically socialist, if not communist. Uh, their own platform last summer was very, very socialist in its agenda. No doubt, you know, Bernie Sanders, the independent senator out of New out of Vermont, basically said that he got everything he wanted. And of course, you know, they've recruited people into this administration that are pro-communist China, that are very radical in their views. They promote critical race theory. They promote the things that are quite contrary to the founding fathers that put together this great nation. And so when you begin to look at this, you, you look at what they've done to our education establishment, 
You've seen how they've recruited the media, uh, which are very progressive, if not uh, outright socialists in their agenda. You've seen what they've done in federal government, uh, whether it's the FBI uh, or parts of the intelligence community and elsewhere. Uh, you see what's happened, you know, obviously, with their ground troops, the Antifas, uh, the Black Lives Matter of the world that have torn apart major cities like Portland, Oregon, or Milwaukee, or others. Uh, and then, of course, I think a lot of people don't understand. You know, if you haven't studied Marxism, you don't understand that Marxism is truly demonic. It really is. Uh, and if you look at the Communist Manifesto and you know, some of the other writings and the background of Karl Marx, which I have in the book, uh, you'll begin to appreciate uh, that not only is this man you know, very, very dark and evil, uh, but he is a proxy for Satan in today's world. And unfortunately, his ideology, his political philosophy, which is Marxism, which is beginning to seep into every crevice in this country, is very, very dangerous for our future. That's Your happy. book is a must read. Yeah. Give me liberty, not Marxism. You must read this yeah. book. I tell you a lot of books to read, so my audience is readers. Mm -hmm. You need to get the book. It's brand new, brand new, hot off the presses, and it is so new. And uh, I want you to order it today. It's yes. only a $25 gift to the ministry, mm -hmm. which we need you right now, this SOS, to save our stations. Yes. Yes, Help. absolutely. Mondo, right? No, absolutely. We need this voice more now than ever. And I'm telling you, uh, messages like this. When you read about this, this book is the most important he's ever written. Yeah. I'm, that's just my opinion. Give me liberty. My God, people, we're sitting back watching our country taken from us. Yeah. All the freedom, everything we have is going down. And the evil that's in this country, everything that was moral now is immoral, immoral is moral. I mean, yeah. it's all mixed up. Just what the Bible says good would be evil, and evil is good. That's right. You've got to order this book today. Please get one for your library. It's brand new. Give me liberty. You've got to give this to your kids. Lori, I think they ought to at least get three of them for their grandchildren. I don't know how many grandchildren they all have. <laughs> well, but it's, it's, it's highly important. And I'm, I've been watching a lot of news just to see what our educators doing. What are, there are some people out there that there's a few, there's a remnant that are standing up and saying, we're not going to allow like the critical race theory in our schools. Yes, and they're man. getting involved That's in the school right. board. They're Thank getting God. involved but in so their few. local politics, their local church. And more need to, and stand up, because if we don't, I don't know what your kids are going to do, you guys over Manda, here. You're, you, you're, you too, you with put young your children kids. In, they're, they're in the yeah. grade school part of it, right? Yes, sir. They're, you know, that school, that college started a, a school for great students from kindergarten all the way to 12th grade for this very reason, to be able to still protect it's, the rights. Name this, can you name the school? Sure. School of the Ozarks is part of College of the Ozarks. And that school it's, is a private funded school. Are their school. leaders standing vocally, publicly? Oh, absolutely. For the, freedom? President, the president of College of the Ozark is one of the most outspoken uh, leaders out there. As a matter of fact, he sued just a few days ago the Biden administration. But I'm telling you, they're coming after private Christian private schools. Private schools? They, they want to they wanna destroy private schools, in other words. But this leader is not going down without a fight. He's going to protect the rights of every Christian uh, student that is part of that school and the parents. Listen, let me give you this one headline just to back up everything that we are talking about. This is from Fox News. Virginia mom who survived Miles China guts out school board's critical race theory push. This is what she said. Listen to this very closely. I, and I quote, I've been very alarmed about what's been going on in our schools. You are now training our children to be social justice warriors and to hate our country and our history. 
This is indeed the American version of the Chinese Cultural Revolution. The critical race theory has its roots in cultural Marxism. It should have no place in our schools in America, wow. end of quote. Wow. That's a message from a mom that has survived past China's communism, cultural race theory, and we're watching it play out in our schools right now. I want you to order this book today. I want you to read it. Would you get it? It's brand new. If it's uh, really you're paying about $20 for the book and it's $5 shipping and handling and all that kind of stuff. But for $25, you're getting all the shipping and handling is taken care of as well. I hate to say things like this, but is there hope at all? And I don't want to even put it that way. I shouldn't even ask this. It's a stupid question. <laughs> because I know in Christ we have hope. We have hope of eternity. But I'm, I'm afraid for America. If they've got to read your book. You are saying things that are shocking. And yep. well, if, what will reading the book do for them? Will, will it educate them on Marxism? Well, it opened their eyes to the reality of what's going on around us. You know, when when Mondo read that piece about uh, Miss Chi, who you know is basically a neighbor of where I live, uh, she understood full well what cultural revolution meant uh, to the Chinese people. It, it basically tossed out all the communities of faith. And of course, today we see throughout China the continuation of the attack on Christians, the destruction of churches, the the burning of Bibles, and of course they go after Uyghur Muslims, they go after Falun Gong and, and other people of faith. Because fundamentally, if you go back in history and and people like Alexander Solzhenitsyn, who was a, you know, a Russian you know, historian and author, he said the very fulcrum of Marxism and Leninism is anti-Christianity. In other words, they have to destroy uh, all things of faith in order for their agenda to you know, continue. And they, in fact, they want to replace all faith in America uh, with that of a faith in Marxism. Marxism has no room for any religion other than itself. And, and if you understand the tenets of Marxism, that's the number one. But then, you know, they have their own psychology, they have their own uh, economic system, there's no private property, and of course, the entire culture, not only your economy, but the idea of private property is out the window. You know, it really is an eye-opening experience for Americans who have enjoyed the civil liberties that our founders gave us, uh, who enjoy all the reasons why our founders and, and the Declaration of Independence, you know, broke away from the British, and in the Constitution, you know, give us the principles and precepts that have made this country so prosperous. Uh, if they understand what we are, you know, really in, in jeopardy of losing, and to replace it with the likes of what you know the Chinese have warned us for decades about what the Soviet Union had, what Eastern Bloc countries, where I've visited many times, well, like the likes of Venezuela or Cuba, if that's what you want, and that's what some of these radicals truly want, uh, then, you know, we're going to be giving up so much, and this country won't be at all. You know, it's perhaps uh, part of the prophetic future, because after all, Pastor, I don't see the United States in biblical end times. And so, it may be that this is the end. Wow. Oh, my wow. God. Wow. That's, that's heavy. That that's is, amazing. That is really heavy. Yeah. You realize it's coming, right? You realize where we are. We realize wow. what America has done. Mm. Does it scare you that America would be so, so strong in their turning their backs on God? Mm. It wow. just drives so me crazy yeah. to see this happening in our country in our country. I felt like last, the last year, we were doing pretty good in America. And of course, COVID hit and all that kind of stuff. Do you think we have, in the last few months, since the election, 
America has, if we were in religious form, we would say backslid. <laughs> America has slidden backwards more than in my entire lifetime, and I'm 81 years old. Wow. wow. That's a statement. Yeah, indeed, it has, I think, Pastor. It's, it's interesting. You, you asked about capitalism, and, you know, the World War II prime minister of, of Great Britain, of course, Winston Churchill, and I'll quote, he said, quote, Capitalism is the worst way to set up a society, except for all the others. Free markets allow for more innovative solutions and for more people to succeed, end quote. Now, if you look at the scriptures, I would argue that though the word capitalism isn't found in the 66 books of the Bible, however, the idea of economics and the behaviors associated with capitalism are clearly there. You know, for instance, look at Matthew 25. The parable of the talents. You know, the master expected a return on his investment in that particular case. Go through Genesis 1.28. What does it say? He, God calls us to be fruitful and to multiply. In other words, to grow what he has given us. And throughout Proverbs, throughout Leviticus, especially 21 to 23, there are all sorts of examples of really the behaviors that we've come accustomed to uh, to back capitalism. Now, in contrast, what socialism, what communism would do is all property, all property belongs to the state. All means of production belong to the state. Now, what does that do? It saps the motivation away from everyone. You know, I visited the Soviet Union. I saw it firsthand. And, and the reality is that, you know, life is just dismal, you know, looking at the faces of those former Soviets. It, it, was, it was terrible. And yet we see from this person, uh, this Miss Chi over in Loudoun County, she was so terrified about what America is beginning to look like that she felt compelled to go and testify and say, you don't want this. You don't know what you're talking about, where this is going to take our country. So, you know, these things are of grave consequence for our future. We need to recognize that first, they're coming after us, as Bonhoeffer said, and then eventually they'll come after you. You know, if you let them take, you know, World War II, the Jews, then they came after the Protestant pastors. Then they came after those that were still faithful, and there wasn't anyone left. So we need to wake up. You know, we're beginning to see evidence of that in school boards across the United States where mama, you know, mamas are getting upset. They're getting upset what they're doing to their children. They're using propaganda, and they're going after their very souls. And we can't tolerate that. Now, some of us can afford perhaps to send our kids to private schools, to Christian schools, to home schools. Uh, but we don't need the entire culture taken captive by these insidious agendas, the, this Marxism that is coming to us through critical race theory. And, you know, it's being fed to us, obviously, through the media today. You know, back in the, the 1930s, uh, uh, the father of modern progressivism, John Dewey, went over to uh, Nazi Germany, and there was what's called the Frankfurt School. Well, they were all you know, professors and uh, Jews. They wanted to escape Hitler's uh, Germany, and so he brought them back. But they were in Marxists in ideology. And where did John Dewey plant them? He planted them in the teacher colleges in Columbia and Princeton, in the, the Ivy Leagues. He also sent a gentleman by the name of Willie Munzenberg uh, to Hollywood, to infiltrate Hollywood. And then, you know, his statements, which I have in my book, talk about how they're going to use porn, pornography and drugs and all sorts of things to contaminate and destroy America from within. And, and you know, that reminds me of something that uh, Nikita Khrushchev said back in 1956. He, he said, pounding his shoe on the you know, United Nations platform, that we're going to take over America, but it's going to be from inside. And how are they going to do that? They're going to do it through our schools, through our churches, and they're going to do it through our media, 
and they're going to do it through our own government and so forth. And so these are very important to understand. Uh, we have to understand uh, where we've come from. You know, Pastor, you and I and Lori and some others there perhaps understand the Cold War. I know the Cold War well because I was over there. Uh, but it, we were fighting, you know, perhaps not throwing bombs at one another, but it was a very tense time. And we almost destroyed the world a couple of times with nuclear weapons. Why is that important? Uh, we were trying to protect our democracy against the insidiousness of Marxism. If we don't learn Marxism and understand the implications it has for our future, uh, we don't have much of a future you know, to look forward to. So I would hope that people would, you know, would pick up Give Me Liberty, uh, Not Marxism, and understand from where we have come and where we might go if we're not very, very careful. Yeah. Wow. wow. I just feel urgently to, yes. that we offer a baker's dozen. Yes. I don't know if you have that yes, available. Yes, we have a baker, baker's dozen, which is 13 of the books, Give Me Liberty, Not Marxism, for a donation of $125 to the ministry, and that includes shipping and handling. Yes. You need 13 books. Yes, 13. That's our baker's, that, that's the missionaries, yes. and you get your little missionary that's card. Right. I want you to pass these out. If there's any book that you need to give out, you need to give this book out. Yes. They need to know. Marxism is a failed That's right. theory. And I, I call it that. But it is a failed System. thing that has been tried. It is evil. It doesn't work. It slaves people. It enslaves them. It hurts them. It kills them. It destroys them. It is in bondage. And right. I want you to, to, why are we going to repeat something that is, we, is proven evil, proven mm -hmm. wrong? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It sounds absolutely crazy, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But I will tell you, in this book, you'll, you're, what, what Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis has uh, pointed out to us, so many things, but he explains um, he exposes Marxism, satanic and occult history, which influences America's ongoing cultural revolution. It's a true, there's an occult history. Do you understand that? That is a satanic. It's, if you've never been around the demonic and the occult. The occult is satanic. It's, it's it is. devil. And that satanic cult mm -hmm. is this last days. Yeah. Is, is the, 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 vor, the verbal fight, the verbal warfare going on right now mm -hmm. is satanic. Right. Absolutely. And it's a warfare of words. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's the enemy taking over our country from Hollywood to... Can you imagine you ever dreamt that they would take over all the newscasts? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's fascinating, Colonel, what you just shared with us um, just a minute ago when you just shared how, how this was actually planned in the 1930s, oh, yeah. you said? And, and they came in in the 1930s and started infiltrating into our Ivy League schools, like you said, and, and Columbia and different, and different schools like that. And then also sending someone to Hollywood. And I, and, I, I mean, this, is, this has been going I, on for a long time and now they're getting- You brought me right to this scene. one. I gotta ask this. Yeah. Colonel, tell me, how can smart people go along with Marxism? How can people who really know history and have intelligence, how can they follow Marxism? What is so attractive to them? Well, it's not attractive necessarily, Pastor, but keep in mind, you know, look at the example of what happened during the Nazi years. Adolf Hitler came in in 1933 out of the, after the, the Reichstag fire and the parliament burned, he did away with his opposition, his political opposition, and he imposed an iron fist uh, control over the people, and he put the Gestapo in charge. And of course, then they started to rid the country of you know, people of faith and imposed you know, a thousand year reign, which is what uh, Adolf Hitler had in mind. Uh, Adolf Hitler, of course, is very similar uh, in his temperament and in, in his spiritual life, as was Marx, as was Lenin, 
as was Robespierre uh, of the French Revolution. And these people are incredibly evil. We have to understand Marx himself, not only you know, would I call him a proxy of Satan, but his own father said that he was, quote, governed by a demon. Uh, his son called him my dear devil. Uh, his good friend, Engels, said he, quote, was a monster of 10,000 devils. His own wife called him a wicked knave. Uh, Marx's favorite reading was uh, from Goethe, uh, the, the play Faust, and his favorite character was Mythophiles. Mythophiles, of course, was you know, the one who basically was the evil spirit for, for which Faust sold his soul. And Marx would often say a line from Faust, and that line from Mythophiles was, everything that exists deserves to perish. One thing after another, as you go through the history of Marxism, whether it was in England or after the 1917 revolution in Russia, all the way up to the end of the Soviet Union, 1991, and even today in Madeira's Venezuela, where there's Marxist rule, uh, you see the insidious demonic evidence of the lifestyle that Satan wants to perpetrate on the world. He's coming after the United States in a way that we've never seen in the past. This is worse than any world war because it's an inside war. They're coming after those of us of faith. Uh, they want to destroy us, and then they want to impose an agenda very similar to what you know, Stalin did you know, to his own people and Mao did to his own people through their cultural revolutions. Mao killed more than 60 to 80 million people. Just read the Black Book of, uh, of Communism, and you begin to see how not dangerous this stuff is. And yet, we have a president, we have members of Congress, whether they be the Eric Swalwells of the world or the Adam Schiff's or the Nancy Pelosi's of the world that are, uh, that are part of this overall agenda being pushed by the Democratic Party, being pushed by the Communist Party of China that wants to you know, diminish the United States, being pushed by you know, a lot of the left-wing media, which now is, unthankfully, the, the majority, by the, the leftist teachers' unions that want to control what our children learn. These things are deep. These things are insidious. They're very real. And I, I hope people begin to wake up and begin to, I mean, like me, write your congressman, speak in public, you know, go up, you know, don't support large corporations that are in bed with these demonic forces. This is a defining time for America today. Yeah, it really is. Wow. This, this, is this is powerful. Yeah. This is, if you're yeah. not. Lori, I want you to have a baker's dozen in your car now. Yes. I'll, I'll pay for it. Okay. If Good. I have to. Good. You know, just because I love you. Okay. But but you drive me most of the time, so I'll steal <laughs> from your, your... We need more than that. We need a couple dozen, a mm -hmm. couple mm -hmm. baker's yeah. dozens in the truck of our car because we're going to pass them out. Yeah. We've got to let people know. Yeah, this, is a, th this is... Uh, I'm very concerned about Marxism. I'm very concerned about this, the evil of all of the communism and all the things we've seen. They, they have murdered, literally, these isms have murdered millions. Yeah. Not just Jews, but people all no. over the world yes. they have murdered. That's right. And then we go along, we say, well, we want to do this. That's, that's terrible what's going on, people. It is because uh, like, Colonel, let's, like Lieutenant Colonel just said, he just said they're coming after us. And they after are coming. Believers. They, yeah. they, they, they are coming after us. Yes. My good We're the first. friends, I hate to m mention their names again, but Tom I Horn is my be. dear friend and yes. son of my board of directors. Yes. Great man of God. They took him off from YouTube. Yeah, the Skywatch TV family. Why yes. did they take him off, Mondo? Yeah, their message, simply. 
their message, what they stand for, what they teach, what they talk about. But usually it's just one blurb or something. Yeah, this one, they the whole channel is wiped out. No longer just took its channel off. That's what they've been yeah. doing to us. That's what they want to do to me. Mm-hmm. And we're fighting for our lives right now. Yeah. And, and so when you give this $125 to get 13 books, you're not just getting the books. You're supporting to keep us... Our SOS is going out this month again yeah. because we need to pay the bills. And we, we don't have credit cards right now, so you have to use a chat. We're, we're fighting for our lives. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you say, oh, well, that's no big deal, Jim. You, if you go away, somebody will take your place. No, they won't. Mm-hmm. They will have it down to where they're going to have it all gone. Mm-hmm. How could they take Tom Horn off the air in one whole channel yeah. and just say you can't be on anymore. Yeah. And that's what they did. Yeah. Look what they did to the president of the that's United right. States, Mondo. They banned the platforming. Yes. They platforming every what? aspect. To yeah. President Trump. Trump. Nina, and that's you fight, what's happening right now. You fight right behind now. the scene yes. all the time to keep us. You're, you're like wave a mm. flag in one hand and, yeah. and, 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 and talking to that's the lawyers in right. the other hand, yeah. trying to keep us on the air. That's right. Not from... People not supporting us. The people want to support us. Yes. But they use systems. They use the technologies. They they use law. Yes. They use all the things. They use our government. They use they the use government our agencies. Mm-hmm. And America, it's so far gone that I in my spirit can see it much more than I think what you're seeing. And it's so far gone. And not only will... We see these things that man is doing, but we're going to see God react, and we're going to see the judgment of God. We're going to see the revelation. It's already speeding up, Mondo. We've seen it like earthquakes and all these volcanoes and things. But I, I want you to do what you can do. And some of you can say, Jim, I'm going to help. I'm going to give. And I'm going to keep you on the air. Mm-hmm. And, and I hate to have to ask for funds. But we have to during this time. Because otherwise we're not going to make it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We, our, our ministry has grown huge. We have a huge audience. We have huge yeah. people who uh, watch. And we need to be able to maintain yeah. what we're doing. To yeah. pay the bills. As soon as we stop paying any station. <laughs> bam. So if That's you see right. me go black and your screen, you know, just disappear. But I think that it's so important for our partners who you partner with us, you know, some of you weekly, some of you monthly, but what's so imperative to understand is this platform is not just for Morningside for us as a family. This platform is for the voice of the prophets. It's for the men and women of God who are on the front lines where guess what? When they're being censored, when they are being deplatformed, they know they can come to the Jim Baker show to get their message and they can speak directly to the American people. Just recently we had Michael Flynn on the show. He said, I knew if I could make it to this platform, I would get directly to the believers, to those who are truly standing for this nation. And that's what this platform is doing. Doing. So it's not just about us sitting here. No. We are providing this platform to voices that must be heard. So we have to stay alive. You know, that's what I keep saying. Lord, you have to keep this show on the air. And for no other reason for us to stand for biblical truth, for biblical truth. And we will continue to stand. You know, I'm going to do, do something. It. I've never what? done anything before. Mm-hmm. I've okay. never done oh. this before. Okay. And, uh, you know, last week, you and I, we gave $1,000. Mm-hmm. I wrote it out from my big account because that's my <laughs> Social Security. <laughs> and that's what I live off from. I'm believing God for 1,000 people to give $1,000 this month by check. Amen. And you can just give the $1,000 pure. Just say, yeah. I just want to give it. And just, that's, I call it the super SOS. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. two S's, super SOS. Super save our yeah. stations and give a thousand dollars. And if, and if you are as upset as I am about what's going on in this Marxism thing and, and what's trying to take over our nation, 
maybe you could give a thousand dollars how many books would they get for a thousand dollars? Oh boy. <laughs> Honey, you're wow. putting us on the okay, spot now. Let me work that up. <laughs> you could do that with the books as well. Mm -hmm. I've never offered that many books. Mm -hmm. Never. Never even suggested. But give me liberty, not Marxism. You've got to get your neighbors to read it. You need your pastor to read it. Mm -hmm. you, the, preachers, the preachers are going to be more important now than yeah. ever before. Right. And they've yeah. got to have the word. They've got to have the information. They must know what's going on. Mm -hmm. How does Marxism help erode our civil liberties? And is yeah. it sort of like a religion? Would you say? Well, it is a religion. Yeah, Pastor, it is a religion. Uh, and Marx is you know, basically bow to uh, the the Communist Manifesto and the leaders where they're, they're the Stalins or the Lenins or the Maos of the world, or in this case, President Xi of China. He's, he's godlike, uh, president for life. Our civil liberties are our freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom from uh, unlawful search and seizure, uh, our freedom to bear arms, you know, the long list of you know, the Bill of Rights in our Constitution guaranteed those civil liberties. They were called out uh, because our founders, uh, the anti-federalists, were very concerned that a federal government would start to deny that. And precisely, uh, that's what's happening with uh, the current uh, government under Mr. Biden in this country. You know, the, the, the threats are very, very real. Uh, and some of which I can't talk about in an open setting because of the, the, the background that I have. However, uh, you know, I know you had Michael Flynn on recently, and, and I think it's important to understand that you know, the communist Chinese threat to overcome our country, to turn us into something as radical as they, uh, they've used, I believe, without a doubt, uh, COVID-19 to manipulate this country. Uh, they will use, like the Russians have used uh, cyber against us at the Colonial Pipeline and the meatpacking plant, but many, many others. You know, the backing of that, of course, is not just Vladimir Putin. It's the F FSB, their intelligence agencies that are uh, hiring proxies to go after, you know, the crown jewels of the United States. Uh, so we're being hit in ways that we've never understood before. These are the nuclear weapons of the future, the biowarfare, the cyber, the, you know, right now China has a space station that they're building up. Uh, I'm told that it has aboard two lasers for killing satellites. You know, without satellites, the United States is blind uh, in this modern world. And so we're facing, you know, issues, we're facing threats that we really can't get our hands around, but they're incredibly real. And our federal government knows about a lot of these things, and you're not hearing the, you know, the facts primarily because we don't want to frighten the people. But I will tell you, as Christians, we understand you know, that, you know, as it says in Ephesians 6, this is a war. It's a war against uh, the unseen. It's a war against powers and principalities. And as I indicated earlier, Marxism is about Satan, is about the army of demons. They are very real. They are using the likes of the Chinese communists, the Russians, and other criminal syndicates around the world to destroy America. America is worth saving. I hope every one of your listeners will take it to heart and begin to do something at the local level. Yes, that's this it. is what we can do right now mm -hmm. with this book. And so if you if you give a thousand dollars, you get a hundred and four books. Yes, I guess it that's is. That's right? right, which is eight, which equates to eight of the baker's dozen offers. So, so that's if you a want total to do of a hundred and four bucks for a thousand dollar SOS. <laughs> and then just pass them out. This would be a great thing for a church to do. Like yes. a church could order that. Get this book to the people. People, we've got to educate our people. That's right. We've got to educate our children. Our children don't know what. They're just singing along, just, mm -hmm. just going out to the dance, going That's out and right. have fun. Just, just 
don't want to don't, don't want to even listen to us. Mm-hmm. And we're they're going to wake up and find out that we're in a prison state that we can't have freedom at all in That's any right. way shape or form. Yes. So I want you everyone to get at least one of the books today. And our time is going to run away from us. I can see that I because this man has something to say. Yes. And and there's just a few that's right. Mm-hmm. And we have them on this program. Yes. Is it worth it yeah. to have people to that people us. that to, uh, uh, work at the Pentagon, people who That's work right. at, uh, at, at, at uh, in high places that are still speaking out for God? Amen. Right. Amen. We've got to keep the airwaves free. Yes. yes. Amen. And we need help. And remember to use the electronic checkbook, checks. right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> electronic checkbook. checks. Their electronic check and do whatever you can and somebody might want to send a million dollars today which would be really great you say jim you're crazy yeah i am yeah. but i have a god who's crazier than i that's am that's right he and he does the impossible he's a god who Amen. Is a Amen. crazy miracles that's right overwhelming miracles yeah we have a clip from new york times editorial board member Mara, is it Mara? Mara Gay. Mara Gay speaking about her concerns over our democracy. Let's watch her and then I'm going to have you comment on her remarks, uh, Colonel. The reality is here that uh, we have a large percentage of the American population. I don't know how big it is, but we have tens of millions of Trump voters who uh, continue to believe that their rights as citizens are under threat by simple virtue of having to share the democracy with others. Um, I think uh, as long as they see Americanness as the same as one with whiteness, this is going to continue. We have to figure out how to get every American a place at the table in this democracy, but how to separate Americanness, America, from whiteness. Until we can confront mm-hmm. that, and talk about that, this is really going to continue. I was on Long Island this weekend uh, visiting a really dear friend, and I was really disturbed. I saw, you know, dozens and dozens of pickup trucks with, uh, you know, uh, explicatives against Joe Biden uh, on the back of them, uh, Trump flags, and some cases just dozens of American flags, which, you know, uh, is also just disturbing because essentially the message was clear. It was, this is my country. This is not your yep. country, I own this. And so until we're ready to have that conversation, this is going to continue. What really is concerning to me as well is it's, it's not just Democrats in Congress. I think there's a large percentage of Americans, even some of my colleagues uh, in journalism, who are invested in some way in pretending that this isn't the threat that it is. That is the real concern. Because you know the Trump voters who are not going to get on board with democracy, they're a minority. You can marginalize them long term. But if we don't take the threat seriously, then I think we're all in really bad shape. Colonel, what was your opinion of Mrs. Gay's remark? Well, she's like the other radicals that are, you know, infiltrated into the Biden administration and are indicative of the people in some of the uh, high offices in the national media that you know have bought into critical race theory, have bought into uh, leftist ideology, uh, who are opposed to people of faith, uh, who have uh, their aim on a very different America than our founders gave us. Our founders gave us a very uh, welcoming country uh, where the 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 America is level, equal opportunity for everyone. Now, we don't all have the same talents, the same capabilities, but we have equal opportunity. Uh, It doesn't matter what your race or ethnicity is, your background. Uh, You can do your best and you can do well in America. But what these people want to do is, is target those that have traditional, mostly Christian values, where we believe in equal opportunity, we believe in private property, we believe in you know, personal accountability, uh, we believe in freedom of speech. They don't believe in that. 
They believe in an elitist, uh, and they believe that they are the elite. You know, if you look at the the likes of Marx, Lenin, Stalin, Mao, uh, they were all elitists. They didn't live like the rest of the people, and so they want to put us underfoot. They want to dominate us. They're upset, of course. You know, this new cultural revolution that we're experiencing. They're upset uh, because anyone that pushes back against their elitist ideas is wrong, and they'll do whatever necessary to destroy us through cancel culture. You know, so when you begin to understand what's happening about you, that it is truly demonic, that it is truly against what we as Christians believe, then you begin to appreciate that you're going to see the likes of this young woman at the New York Times saying the things that she does because, you know, she sees this as a, a opposition to her radical view, and they'll do whatever necessary to destroy us. Meanwhile, we have to fight back through prayer, through, you know, you know the sharing of the gospel of Christ, which is welcoming and loving and caring and, and gives hope and purpose in life. And if you do these sorts of things in this culture, we will indeed survive. We will prosper. Prosper as our founders intended, and prosper as our God and graces us to do so. I wanted to ask you about, in your book, Give Me Liberty, I've written it down here, that the Democratic Party has considered considerable Marxist influence, possibly even members within the party mm. being Marcus, Marxist themselves. themselves. Right. Is that correct? Well, it is. You know, certainly in what they believe, uh, you know, if you look at, you know, there's a statement by Aesop, who, of course, was you know, an ancient Greek uh, storyteller. You may recall that he says, you're known by the people that you associate with. Well, you know, when Joe Biden was looking around trying to find out who he might run with back in the summer of 2020, he stumbled upon Kamala Harris. Now, Ms. Harris is the perfect candidate uh, for Joe Biden because a woman, uh, half African American, half uh, Indian, uh, someone with far left credentials. If you look at her ideological background as a senator and elsewhere, yeah, she supported Green New Deal, health care for all, you know, you know, forgiveness of all college debt. Uh, you know, the, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, the, she was the most radical, most far left senator in the U.S. Senate at the time. Her own sister is well documented, and I put this in the book, uh, as associating with known communists at Stanford. Now, her own associations with whether or not it's uh, San Francisco Mayor Willie Brown, who was a personal friend of the president of communist China, uh, and who helped the Communist Youth League himself. Uh, her own husband works for a, a legal fee or, or a legal firm that is in bed with the Communist Chinese. The, the leader of that legal uh, foundation or legal firm in China is a, an advisor to the Communist Chinese Party. Um, and then, of course, there's a long list of people inside the administration, some of which Ms. Harris is associated with personally, uh, that, you know, work for firms that are very cozy with the communist Chinese. I don't know that she's communist, but certainly her ideology, her background, her associations suggest a far leftist agenda and one that is frightening, to say the least. Now, she's not the only one. We've all heard about... Uh, the congresswoman uh, from uh, from Minnesota, Elon Omar, uh, she, of course, uh, her daughter, you know, tweets these uh, Marxist you know, agendas. She tweeted recently, R.I.P. Capitalism, uh, rest in peace capitalism. Uh, her Twitter account shows a hammer and a sickle like the Soviet Union. Uh, you have associations with communist organizations, well-known communist organizations in the United States that have, you know, consistently support the Democratic Party. Look at their agenda. Look at their their platform of this past summer. Uh, look at you know 
you know, the likes of Adam Schiff, who, of course, you know, objected when Mr. Trump closed down a consulate in Houston, Texas, because it was confirmed to be spying left and right on you on the United States. The list in which I have an entire chapter on, on the Democratic Party and their association with known communists is, is scary to say the least. And yet, you know, this administration and the both chambers of Congress are in the control of the Democratic Party. This is rather sobering. I want to thank our special guest, Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis, for being with us today. We have to go for today, but please call me right now and help us with this Super Save Our Station gift offer of $1,000. This will give us a miracle if a thousand people would do this today, call me at 1-888-988-1588. Or you can go to our website at thejimbakershow.com. Or you can write us at Post Office Box 7330, Branson, Missouri, 65615. God loves you. He really does. Thank you for watching today's program. We need your support now more than ever. Call us today, 1-888-988-1588. You can also write to The Jim Baker Show at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri, 65615. Or you can make your donation and order of other products online at our website, jimbakershow.com. That number again is one 1- 888-988-1588. Thank you for your continued prayers and financial support. It's because of partners like you that we can continue to broadcast the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world.